Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a marvelous problem for you all today. Uh, this one is from the Polish Olympiad in 2011. Uh, and I had a lot of fun solving it. So if you'd like to give it a try, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC with N circle I and D, E, and F are the points of tangency. Uh, then we take the midpoints of AF and AE and we draw the line through them. So we draw the line GH. And then similarly, we take the midpoints of BF and BD and we draw the line. And then we take the midpoints of CD and CE and we draw the line through them. And they form a triangle. And we want to show that the circumcenter of this triangle is the same as the circumcenter of ABC. All right. So in this problem, I'm going to use the technique of point circles. Uh, so I'm going to explain what that is. Um, there was another poster on the forum that saw uh, the same idea, um, but I'm going to write it out in a little more detail. Um, but this technique, I've seen it used maybe five times or so before, um, so it's, it's fairly useful. So whenever I have a line connecting the two midpoints, of uh, two segments of tangent C, uh, that line JK is the radical axis of the point circle B and the in circle, which I'm gonna call omega. So I'm gonna explain this a little bit more, but the point B, it's like a circle with center B, but radius zero. So this might seem kind of strange at first, but it turns out to be fairly useful. So I'll explain why. Um, so we can think of B as, as a circle with uh, radius zero, and then we have the in circle. So the question is, what is the radical axis of those two circles? And it turns out the line JK is the radical axis. So, um, so first I'm gonna show that K lies on the radical axis. And by definition, the radical axis of two circles is, is the set of points which have the same power with respect to those two circles. So what's the power of K with respect to the point circle B? Well, it would just be KB squared because it's kind of like KB is tangent to the point circle uh, B. And so KB squared is the power of K with respect to that circle. Uh, and then also KD squared is the power of K with respect to the in circle omega. Uh, I put the label right there. Since K has the same power with respect to those two circles, it lies on their radical axis. Okay, so the power of K with respect to that point circle B is KB squared. And the power of K with respect to omega is KB squared. And so K lies on the radical axis of those two circles. All right. And then by the exact same reasoning, J also lies on the radical axis of those two circles. And so that means that JK has to be the radical axis of those two circles. Because the radical axis is always a straight line. So since J and K both lie on it, it has to be the straight line through J and K. All right. And then by the same logic, ML is the radical axis of the point circle B and the in circle omega. Um, and okay, so, and the same would be true for GH. I don't think I'm gonna write it out in the steps, but the line GH is the radical axis of the point circle A and the in circle omega. All right, so why did I do all of this? Well, it's because I want to apply the radical axis theorem. Okay, so, by the radical axis theorem, if we have the point circle B, the point circle C, and the in circle omega, then that would mean J, K, L, and M, and the radical axis of the points B and C have to concur, and they'd have to concur at point N. But what is the radical axis of point B and point C? So they're both circles with radius zero, uh, the definition of the radical axis, like I said, it's the set of points which have the same power with respect to both circles. So what are the points which have the same power with respect to the circles B and C? Well, it's everything with the same distance to B and C. 
So it's actually the perpendicular bisector of BC. So if we use the radical axis theorem, that means N has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of BC. All right, so I'm gonna write this out. So like I just said, the radical axis of these two circles B and C with radius zero is the perpendicular bisector of BC. And so therefore JK, ML, and that perpendicular bisector have to meet at point N by the radical axis theorem. So it's very interesting. We're applying the radical axis theorem where two of the three circles are just point circles, okay? All right, so N lies on the perpendicular bisector of BC. So I'm gonna label um, the circumcenter of ABC as O. All right, um, so O is the circumcenter of ABC and so since N lies on the perpendicular bisector of BC, ON has to be perpendicular to BC, all right? And if ON is perpendicular to BC, then ON has to be parallel to ID, because ID is also perpendicular to BC, all right? So basically, ON is parallel to ID, and then by the same logic, we could um, show that OQ is parallel to IF and OP is parallel to IE. All right, so this uh, means that um, we're seeing some kind of similarities between triangles FED and QPN. And in fact, it turns out those two triangles are indeed similar and it's not hard to show because FD has to be parallel to JK because JK is a mid segment of triangle BFD. That's because J is the midpoint of BF and K is the midpoint of BD. So if FD is parallel to JK and EF is parallel to HG and DE is parallel to LM, well, that would mean the three sides of the triangles FED and QPN are all uh, parallel. The corresponding sides are parallel. And so they have to be similar triangles. So triangle QPN is similar to triangle FED. And also, due to all the parallels that we mentioned before, OQ is par parallel to IF, OP is parallel to IE, and ON is parallel to ID, it's not hard to see from there that I and O are corresponding points in those two similar triangles. Uh, so I'm not going to write out the, the full proof, um, but it's very clear. If, if all three corresponding sides of those two triangles are parallel, and the lines from O to each of the vertices are parallel to the lines from I to each of the vertices of D, E, and F, then it's clear that I and O are corresponding points in those two similar triangles. And since I is the circumcenter of FED, then O has to also be the circumcenter of QPN, all right? And if O is the circumcenter of QPN, well, that solves the problem because O is also the circumcenter of ABC, and so we want, and so therefore we've shown that the two triangles have the same circumcenter. So this is a very fun problem, and this idea of point circles it doesn't come up super often, but when it does come up, it's very helpful. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.